Another statistical analysis um, technique that would be something that might be useful for you when you do recordings and stuff is uh, the chi square test for goodness of fit. So, um, firstly, this over here it is the Greek letter chi. Um, so, you might be, you might have seen something in order of this fashion. So, um, almost looks like an X, so therefore that's what you would probably see over here. Okay, the chi squared test for goodness of fit has got this equation. Um, it's the sum of the observed value minus the expected value, it's all squared divided by the expected value. Um, again, we will have a look at it when we do an example and it should become a bit more clear in terms of what it's all about. Um, it's the sum of 1 to n, so n is the number of observations. Um, and you'll be given a, a table of chi squared for probability p um, to determine what the probability is. And then there's also degrees of freedom f that we will be coming across. So f is equal to n minus k, where n is the number of observations and k is the imposed restrictions. Like I mentioned, please do an example so that you can actually see what, um, how it all fits together. So two dice are rolled a hundred times. So we're given a constraint over there that the dice is rolled a hundred times. So therefore we've got one constraint, therefore k is equal to one. So keep this in mind for future references uh, when we get to do that calculation. You could have other constraints as well. For example, the question might ask you, a roll is only valid if an even number is observed or or odd numbers observed, or whatever the combinations might be. So, there, this could be there could be more constraints than just one. Calcul calculate the probability that the dice are unloaded. Okay, so we've got over here this table. We've got um, the number of of readings that are possible from well with the two dice. So we've got two, three, four, all the way to twelve. We've had a look at a very similar table before. And these are the occurrences that have occurred. So um, the dust were thrown and there were two occurrences that the number two was, was found. Or well, there were 19 occurrences that the number seven um, was old. Um, so you'll probably find that the numbers in, in a center do occur more often. And this could be because of the reason being that uh, in these specific um, numbers there's more combinations to be able to get them. Now to get a 7 you can have a, um, a 3 and a 4, or a 4 and a 3. Um, while also to get a 7 you could even get a 5 and a 2 and a 2 and a 5, or a 6 and a 1 and a 1 and a 6. Whereas to get a number 2 you only have a 1 and a 1. So that's the reason why these numbers in the middle would become a lot bigger. The probability values that's in this column over here are all given as a fraction. You could have it as an actual value. Um, in this specific example, you would see that uh, the well, number of uh, or probability of getting a two is one over thirty-six. We calculated that in a previous exercise um, or with the other nodes that we looked at. Um, we also, you can see like to get the probability to get uh, number 3 is essentially 2 over 36. Um, it was simplified over here as 1 over 18. You don't have to do that, um, it just, I think a simplification process, there's more chances of making errors. Um, so leave it in terms of the base of all under 36, or the denominator, denominator is always 36. Um, for this example, it would be less chance of um, error that you'll be able to make. Nonetheless, and then you've got the expected value. Now this expected value over here is calculated by, so I'll just do that. That is that probability value. value. 
multiply by 100. Now why 100? And the reason for that is because of this total that we've got over here. One of those were performed and therefore we, that 100 is being used for over there. So it's probability value times 100. You would also notice that this expected value will add up to 100 and your probability values all together will add up to 1. Alright, so now we've got to calculate this um, this g squared and essentially what we will be doing is we'll be looking at this equation over here. So again, let's have a look at the uh, um, at, at uh, how the calculation is performed. So g squared is equal to the sum of the observed value. And if you look over here, observed value is, is taken as a, a number of times it occurred. So in the first um, row we've got 2 minus the expected value is 2.778. Okay. And that is all squared, divided by the expected value, which is 2.778. Alright, plus, now let's look at the next one, which is for the number 3. So, the number of occurrences was 3. So we can say that's plus 3. Sorry, minus over there. The expected value to get a number 3 is 5.556. So 5.556. That's all squared and that's divided by the expected value of 5.556. Plus, let's look at the value for number 4. So, number of times number 4 occurred was 9 times. So we've got 9 minus. The expected value was 8.333. Okay, so it's 8.333. That's all squared. Divide by 8.333. Plus. And you're going to do this for the rest of the values over there. Um, I'm not going to do this. This can be an uh, exercise that you can do um, to sort of see if you are following the correct steps. But you'll continue it all for up to the 12th um, or number that was possible to roll. And once you've all done this and you've added it up together, so we'll, we'll put dot dot dot, dot 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 dot, and we'll do the last one for the number 12. So the number 12, there was one occurrence that happened, so it's 1 minus, and the expected value was 2.778. 2.778 that's all squared divided by 2.778 and therefore your final answer will then be equal to 3.842 okay and that's the same as the value that I've got over here okay so now we've calculated the g squared um, value but what does this mean what do we do with it Okay, so the next step we've got to do is, we've got to actually look at, um, now that we've calculated this g squared value, we've got to look at what f is. Now remember f, we calculate it over here, that's the number of degrees of freedom, that's calculate from n minus k. Now, if you remember looking at this table and also the previous examples that we looked at, n was the number of times or the different uh, type of different possibilities we were able to get. And we said that it wasn't possible to get a uh, number one rolled with two dice. So therefore you've got 11 different possibilities of the dice to be rolled over here. So therefore n is equal to 11 and that's where it gets over here. Keep in mind as well, we had to look at the constraints over here in the question. We had one constraint because the dice was all down at times, so if k is equal to 1, so we placed the 1 over there for the value of k. 
Okay, so therefore f is equal to 10. Right. So, yeah, let's just have a look at um, just to, for reference purposes, remember that g squared was equal to 3.842. Okay, so those are the two values that we're going to be now looking at. Now, this is a g squared probability um, value table that you can then refer to. I was joking that you've got to know this table for the exams. Um, but this is something you do be supplied with and you'll be able to refer to in different examples. Okay, so if you look at um, this table, you'll see over here on the first column, it's got the values for the different, um, different number of freedoms or the F values. Mm -hmm. You'll see in the first row, we've got different probabilities that are indicated over there. And then we've got all these numbers in between. Now these numbers that are in between over here, these are g squared values. Okay, so the first step we've got to do is, is we know that f is equal to 10. We've, we've calculated that. Okay, so f is equal to 10. We did that calculation. So we come down over here and we realize that f is in, equal to 10 in this specific row. Okay. Now the next thing we've got to do is, is we've got to look at our g squared value. Now, g squared value is 3,842. So, therefore, we come and have a look down this row of where f is equal to 10. And you'll see 3,25 and 3,94. So, 3,842 is between 3,25 and 3,94. So, we know that in between that section over there, we will have a g squared value of 3,842. Okay. Now the same thing applies, we're going to be using interpolation. Again, something you would probably be aware of and um, be able to, to um, know how to use it. And we will use interpolation to determine where 3.842 fits in this region over here. So we'll have that ratio over there and we will correlate it with the ratio over here. Now keep in mind, the g squared value over here is increasing as we go in towards the right hand side. Yet the probability is decreasing as we go in to the right hand side. So we know that 3.842 it's probably going to sit around about, if we had to use some linear system on this red line, it's probably going to sit around about over there between those two numbers, which will correlate to sitting around about over there between 0.975 and 0.94. So keep in mind that once we know that what that ratio is of where it's sitting between these two numbers, we need to subtract it from 0 0.975 to be able to know what distance it is between there and 0 0.95. Okay, so again, the exercise that I'm um, going to leave you to do to see if you're able to do the calculation correctly. But when you do it, you will find that the probability is equal to 0 0.954. Okay, and that will be your final answer for this specific question. Give it a try, see how, you know, if you're able to calculate it. But it is a way to be able to calculate your probability. There's a few factors you just have to keep in mind when doing this. The first is that you need to look at this um, number of occurrences and expected value. Keep in mind that your expected value is and probability multiplied by the number of, uh, total number of throws in this case that happened. From that, we are able to then do the calculation, which will allow us to do the t squared. We use this equation over here, and like I started off over here, we are able to calculate the t squared value, which came to 3.842. Once you've calculated that, then you're able to calculate the freedom, or the degrees of freedom that you've got. Keep in mind that's n minus k. 
So n is the number of um, different possibilities that we looked at. So in the dice, you can throw between one. Uh, well, th you can when you throw two dice, you can get a value of between two and twelve, which is eleven different values. We had one constraint, so we were able to get a value of ten for the degrees of freedom. So now that we've got these two values, we can have a look at our table. We can find where f is going down a column. Once we know which row um, f is equal to 10 would be in, we know that we're going to be looking at the numbers in that specific row. Then we look for a chief squared value, in this case of 3,842. Down this row, a row, and we see it's going to fit between these two specific numbers, which is 3.25 and 3.94. Using interpolation, we determine how far it is between those two numbers. But we subtract it from the probability value of 0 0.975 because the chi squared values increase is going towards the right while the probability value decreases while going towards the right. And then once you've been able to calculate that with the interpolation, you'll be able to get the probability value, which in this case is equal to 0 0.954.